Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. Big news item today, President Biden next week will be issuing an executive order around cryptocurrencies citing security concerns. I want to break this down for you. What are we hearing? What do we know as of today? And what can we expect? What are some of the outcomes? Is this good? Is it bad? Because it doesn't matter what coin you hold. If you're a Bitcoin a holder, XRP holder, Ethereum, Cardano, whatever it is, this is important that we need to know about because we know that certain members of Congress and within the government are coming for crypto as a whole. They're trying to slow it down as much as possible. So we're going to talk about what's being said. There's some investigative reporting being done by Decrypt and what they're saying about who's working with the White House to come after crypto. In addition, we have some other crypto regulation news where members of Congress have sent out a letter um, regarding the infrastructure bill and reporting there. So lots of breakdown and there's some big Bitcoin mining news in Texas as well as Zimbabwe. So lots to go through. Before we get to it, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. If you're listening on a podcast site, please give me five stars. Guys, this video is brought to you by Algorand, which is building the future of finance. Algorand is one of the leading blockchain projects in the crypto industry. They're getting significant adoption and investments. So if you would like to learn more, please visit algorand.com. Now, if we take a look at the crypto market list here, Bitcoin is back over $37,000. But as we've been talking about, uh, all coins are not doing anything. They're essentially waiting for Bitcoin to find its bottom. And, you know, it's right now in price discovery to figure out what that bottom is, most likely $30,000. And then Bitcoin will retrace to um, maybe about fifty five dollars to 58000 is what I believe. But, you know, we don't know what's going to actually happen because no one can predict the future. Uh, so we just have to be patient and let Bitcoin do its thing. And then I believe... Once Bitcoin has made its move, we'll see alt season. Now, I've been talking about, you know, the scenario, which pretty much is in line with Blockchain Backer, who has a YouTube channel. Many of you know who he is. He's been pretty accurate with his predictions, but so has Credible Crypto and who I've been, I'm looking to get an interview with soon. And he's predicting that after this correction, Bitcoin will move a bit sideways and then start to move up slowly and then could go to new all-time highs. You know, he predicted um, the movements that we're seeing right now since in November. So he's been uh, on track as well. Um, and he's saying, just load it up uh, the chart to take a look where we are now since I shared this about six weeks ago. And essentially he talked about the correction downwards. Um, and he says, we will have one more swing lower below 42K, but above 30K, which is exactly what's playing out right now. So he was on uh, track with that. So it's a matter of, you know, blockchain backers theory that Bitcoin has a retracement to 55 to 58, then starts uh, going back down and then all season or credible crypto who's saying, hey, this the other scenario is Bitcoin still has a blow off top to go to, then we'll see all season. Um, obviously, I prefer Credible Crypto's theory, but I have to be realistic as well. Blockchain backers theory could be uh, realistic as well. And, and the reason why I'm sharing these guys' uh, respective theories about what the market could do, because they're 100% they're technical analysts. They, this is what they live and breathe. I am not, no, I'm nowhere near their level at all. Uh, I'm still learning like many of you, but you know, I, I look at multiple data sources and, and different opinions as well. It's important to do that. You don't want to be, uh, you know, just not only listen to the things that um, play into your narrative or, or what uh, appease you, but you have to listen to both the contrarian um, and, and the, the, the ones, the opinions that you agree with, but also the contrarian as well. It's important to do that. Uh, we want to make sure we're making the right decisions and the right moves and we want to look at all scenarios and look at the market holistically. So at this point, it's a waiting game. We just have to wait and see what Bitcoin uh, will do over the next few weeks. Right now in the weekly chart, a weak green candle is forming. 
So hopefully we find the bottom soon, but I think Bitcoin could still uh, get choppy and move sideways and go down a little bit and pump up a little bit and until it's, it's fine, it finds that support level. So it's just a matter of being patient, just like we had to be patient during the summer, guys, when it was pretty uh, boring, it was pretty painful. Look at how long it took Bitcoin to just go through that. Um, do I believe we'll have to do the same thing now as long, you know, like two, three months? I'm not sure, but it, it could, might take a month or a month and a half, but we'll just have to wait and see. All right, uh, let's move ahead here. Here's the big news. The Biden administration is reportedly preparing to release an executive action to re regulate Bitcoin as a matter of national security. So not just Bitcoin, but obviously the entire crypto market. Now, this is being reported by Barron's. This is where the news is actually being broken from. And the headline reads, White House wants crypto rules as a matter of national security. And we only get a tidbit of what this article is. You have to subscribe to view the whole thing. I, I hate these subscription models. But it says here, the Biden administration is preparing to release an executive action that will, uh, uh, blah, 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 that will task federal agencies with regulating digital assets such as Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a matter of national security. A person familiar with the White House's plans tell Barron's. The National Security Memorandum, expected to come in the next few weeks, would task parts of government with analyzing digital assets and assembling a regulatory framework that covers crypto, stable coins, and NFTs or non-fungible tokens, this person said. And that's kind of where the article uh, summary ends. And um, Eleanor Tourette of Fox Business, who's been doing investigative journalism around the SEC Ripple lawsuit, she tweeted out the following, um, talking about this and that this is a matter of national security. But she said she's changing the few weeks uh, line in the article to next week as per the source. So she spoke to the source and it looks like next week is when Biden's uh, administration is going to release this thing. So what can we expect, guys? Well, from what we see here, they want to have the different regulatory bodies within the government. So I'm assuming the SEC, the CFTC, the OCC, and so forth, these folks to come together and start putting out uh, what I would think is clear crypto regulations. Um, it could be bad, or this could be good where maybe they don't, they're not as aggressive and they don't try to stifle the innovation because that's a problem where we've been seeing with the SEC. Um, so I, I'm optimistic, but cautiously optimistic, if that makes sense, because, look, I don't know what we're going to see. A lot of Democrats and, and yes, we do have bipartisan support for crypto. But look, a lot of Democrats uh, have been kind of anti crypto. You look at Janet Yellen, uh, you look at Elizabeth Warren, um, guys like uh, Brad Sherman, who I hope he gets defeated by Arica Rhodes. Uh, so. Right now, we're, it's a waiting game, and I'm hoping it is positive. Uh, we are seeing a lot of dialogue around crypto regulations and things like that around the globe. We just heard from Putin and Russia. So let's see what Biden does here. He has the opportunity and could go down in history uh, if he does this right. Look, if he does it wrong, too, he could go down in history for those reasons. But think of the internet and what could happen with the economy if he was to do this right with jobs and all that. But, you know, we have to wait and see because we know, look, Biden, all these regulators and politicians are being lobbied by the banking cartel, the traditional financial world, banks that want to slow this thing down as much as possible because they want control of it. Now, funny enough, today, it was released today, a investigative journalism piece by Decrypt. And here's the title, Snow Job, the plot to hand the crypto industry to the big banks. The Biden administration's secret crypto strategy is becoming clear. It wants to force stablecoin issuers into the arms of big banking. This, remember what I've been saying, the banking cartel? Gary Genser is a puppet. Janet Yellen is a lap dog for the bankers. I've been saying it for a long time. There's a reason, guys. Because the banks control these people. You just look at uh, the rotating door you have with 
uh, government officials and, and the banking uh, sector. We've seen guys from Goldman Sachs go work for the government, Hank Paulson and many others, right? Steve Mnuchin. So I, I, I'm cautiously optimistic. So uh, let's, let's go through this. Um, the Biden administration's crypto strategy hinges on stable coins. The strategy is to use federal agencies to squeeze stable coin issuers. The ultimate beneficiary is likely to be the big banks because the big banks want to issue their own coins. They want to control the flow of money. They, they don't like these private institutions and crypto companies like Circle and Tether and many others issuing uh, stable coins. You know, look, that's why JP Morgan went and created JPM coin because they see that these their lunch is being eaten, right? <laughs> so uh, they're, of course, lobbying the hell out of people like Janet Yellen and folks part of the um, Biden administration to try to control this. So let's see if I can call out a few things here. Um, interviews with former regulators and executives at top crypto firms reveal a sophisticated plan not to crush crypto, but to co-opt it by handing a core part of the crypto industry stable coins to the big banks. Doing this, regulators be believe, will bring the freewheeling crypto economy to heel. Here's a quote. It's a very thought through doctrine about how to stop the crypto industry from growing too fast and too much, says Maya Zahavi, a crypto entrepreneur and investor who has advised regulators. So who exactly is behind the strategy? Listen to this. While many may view the ambitious SEC chair Gary Gensler as the architect of the Biden administration's anti-crypto policies, his influence has been overstated. It is instead... Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, Senator Elizabeth Warren, and a clique of Federal Reserve veterans who appear to be calling the shots. So remember when I called Janet Yellen uh, the banker's lapdog, and that got picked up by the Washington Post? Um, and if you remember, it's because, guys, you just see the, the moves they're making, and, and you look at their donations and who they're uh, uh, fighting for, and it's like, Really? Really, it, it, it's it's pathetic. And Elizabeth Warren, she is a hypocrite. I hope she gets voted out of office. Um, so that's just kind of like a little preview, guys, of what's happening here. We got a fight on our hands. And thank goodness there are folks who are covering this and reporting on it. And there are members of Congress, both uh, Republicans and Democrats, that are fighting this back. For example, uh, we have the financial services GOP, which has two members, Patrick McHenry, uh, Representative Tim Ryan out of Ohio, and their, their colleague sent a letter to Janet Yellen ahead of the expected guidance on new digital asset reporting requirements. They urge her to provide clarity, additional clarity to America's innovators and entrepreneurs. Now remember, Yellen is the one responsible for inserting that bullshit reporting requirements into the infrastructure bill, right? Um, and here's what uh, Patrick McHenry had to say about this respective um, uh, uh, requirements. He said, we introduced the, the Keep Innovation in America Act to fix the new digital asset reporting requirements, but our innovators and entrepreneurs can't wait. Secretary Yellen must provide much needed clarity so this nascent industry can flourish here in the United States. Um, Rep Congressman Tom Ryan uh, also weighed in. He said, I've always been a big believer in the power of American innovation. To keep leading, we need politics that put our innovators and entrepreneurs in the digital asset space on top and give them clear regulate, clear guidelines needed to uh, th thrive. Uh, Senator Yellen must provide this much needed clarity. So I'm so happy to see you know, these folks are taking action. I'm actually trying to get an interview with Congressman Tim, Tim Ryan, as well as Representative Patrick McHenry. And, uh, you know, we're seeing more and more members of Congress are jumping on board with crypto. Many are joining things like the Blockchain Caucus, led by uh, Congressman Tom Emmer and Darren Soto. So we're making progress, but it's a fight. We got a head on our hands. Uh, now, Patrick McHenry also said the following. He tweeted out this. It must be Groundhog Day. Democrats are once again using a massive partisan legislative package to sneak through disruptive, excuse me, destructive digital asset policies, first in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, and now in this so-called China competitive, 
Ness bill. So once again, Yellen and Elizabeth Warren, hypocrites. Um, and I'm glad once again, that, that these folks are being called out and we have folks who are pro crypto and looking to uh, provide clarity for the market. Now, speaking of clarity, the SEC continues their bullshit. Uh, they have rejected Fidelity's wise origin Bitcoin trust spot Bitcoin ETF. Um, so they just denied, um, I, I think it was, boy, I forgot the name of it. They just denied another one as well. But just look at this, Fidelity, right? And we've been covering this, this news around Fidelity. Fidelity got an approval in Canada for a Bitcoin spot ETF. And that ETF is trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And here in the United States, they're getting denied. This is pathetic. Gary Gensler is pathetic. Um, and, and once again, it's not just about XRP. It's not just about Bitcoin. It's the entire industry. Obviously, they're going after stable coins. We've been talking about the SEC has the crypto exchanges in their, uh, in their targets. And they're going after lending platforms. Obviously, they blocked Coinbase lending. They're now going after Celsius as well as uh, Gemini, I believe. So it no one can hide here. And I think, you know, some folks have been staying quiet about the Ripple lawsuit when they shouldn't be. And many of them are hypocrites for doing that. But watch when the SEC comes knocking on the door. They're all going to scramble and try to, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, they're going to want Ripple to win because that is going to be a big chink in the armor of the SEC that uh, is going to really help the rest of the industry. Now, you know, despite all these things, we're seeing a progression of Bitcoin mining adoption in the United States. You know, I've been uh, talking about it for years, the macroeconomic battle for control of Bitcoin's hash rate. And the United States is now the leader after China banned Bitcoin. And then we saw Russia's Vladimir Putin come out and say, hey, uh, Russia has advantages when it comes to Bitcoin mining and the, Finnish, the finance minister and the central bank need to work together to get proper regulations. So Texas Congressman, Bitcoin mining is promoting innovation and creating jobs. Who is this, you may ask? This is um, Pete Sessions, who uh, represents the 17th Congressional District of Texas. He was actually at Riot Windstone's uh, facilities, looks like today, or excuse me, yesterday, and they posted a video on it, you know, talking about how this is creating jobs. Now, those of you who have been uh, sub subscribers to this channel, I interviewed Chad Everett from Winstone, as well as Jason uh, Less of Riot Blockchain. And this is the largest North American mining facility. Uh, they have a huge, huge presence there. You know, in my interview with Chad, he talked about creating jobs for the local economy, all the great things they're doing there. So it's awesome to see this happening in the United States, especially after China banning Bitcoin. And looks like Russia wants to grab a share of the pie, guys. Bitcoin's here to stay as a store of value, as digital gold. And a lot of investments are happening, a lot of expansions, a lot of miners are going public, um, and a lot of big companies are investing in mining now. Now, speaking of mining, the Zimbabwe Farming Collective raises $1.4 million to mine Bitcoin with solar power. Guys, game theory will play out across many countries in Africa. They have obviously the weather um, to do a lot of solar, and this is going to benefit many of these folks, um, and especially areas where there's excess energy. And uh, if, if you don't see what's happening, I don't know what to say, but we're seeing Metcalf's Law network effects happening globally. And that is why people have, have high price predictions for Bitcoin, not for like today, but like for the future as things continue to grow and get adoption and higher prices, higher prices for the crypto market as well, guys. So uh, patience is the key here. Now here's an adoption of, glo uh, excuse me, an example of global adoptions. Uh, Brussels member of parliament to convert entire 2022 salary into Bitcoin entire salary. That is very bullish, my friends. And uh, we're going to see more and more of this. We see New York City mayor taking his paychecks in Bitcoin. So did uh, Mayor Francis Suarez out of Miami. So things are heating up, we're moving in the direction of mass adoption. Um, and speaking of Putin, uh, you know, there was for further confirmation that he supports the government's proposal 
to allow regulated and Bitcoin, regulated Bitcoin and crypto mining. Guys, I, I don't know what to say. If you don't get it by now, uh, even if you don't like Bitcoin, we need Bitcoin to do well for the rest of the altcoins to do well because we see altcoins move with Bitcoin. Not a lot of folks re recognize that or understand that. And you have to put your emotions and feelings uh, aside to really understand what is taking place. Now, if you're an XRP holder, well, the solo airdrop is 85% uh, completed and uh, they've been tweeting and giving updates on this. Uh, so hope for those of you who participated in the respective snapshot, you should be getting your distribution of uh, solo tokens and uh, it's free money, guys. Um, so I'm happy I'm getting mine. And uh, hope, hopefully those of you who participated in getting yours as well. Uh, this is, you know, one of the great benefits of the crypto market. You know, you're holding some of these assets. You can stake them. Uh, you, you know, there's sometimes uh, different projects that are built and, and tokens that are airdropped. So I, I love it, guys. You can get some really nice uh, money here. Now, obviously, some folks may sell their tokens. Some folks may use it. It's just It's just up to you what you want to do. Um, it's your money, uh, but, you know, obviously look at all options. If you can earn yield or stake it or whatever it may be, you want to explore those options to see what the long-term returns could be versus selling it now. So some things to think about. Anyway, guys, what do you think about this news with Biden? Uh, hopefully this is not bad news. Hopefully it's just, hey, all the regulatory agencies, let's come together uh, start working on a crypto framework. And, you know, it's, it's good news that sends the market going upwards. Um, but like I said, I am cautiously optimistic because it could be negative. We'll have to wait and see. You know, long term, I'm still bullish on this market. I see a lot of uh, big institutional investors are holding crypto now. And look, they're going to lobby. They're going to have influence over politicians. And one thing we know, you know, there is a ruling class. Uh, well, I know I'm not. Uh, some people may not agree with that, but look, man, money talks, and millionaires and billionaires—they're able to buy politicians and get things done in their favor. We've seen it with corporations and different folks. So the the, the bigger the whales are that whole crypto, uh, like Elon Musk and Tesla and 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 many others, Ray Dalio and these hedge fund guys, the, the better chance that uh, you know the president and the government's not going to come out too aggressive or hard on crypto because they don't want to hurt the pockets of these ruling class guys or these whales, whatever you want to call them, the elites or whatever it is. That's how we've seen the, the, <laughs> this market run, right? The economy where uh, if you got the money, you can go lobby, you can get things done. That's how it works. And, uh, you know, many corporations have gone and lobbied and got laws in their favor. So, if, if you understand what's happening, uh, you know, outside of crypto, when it comes to that, then you'll, you'll understand that it, maybe they won't come out too hard against this. Anyway, guys, I want to hear what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later.